the fourth paper, Public Health Benefits of Strategies to Reduce Greenhouse Gas Emissions. Food and Agriculture. The researchers examined how Britain could meet the carbon emission reduction goals set by the UK Committee on Climate Change, which call for an 80% lessening of 1990 CO2 concentrations by 2050, with a minimum 50% reduction by 2030. The experts concluded that the only way this goal could be reached was through a 30% reduction in UK livestock production, with a corresponding 30% decline in the British public's consumption of animal products. It was also determined that this reduction in consumption would enhance public health because decreased intake of the saturated fats found in animal products would lead to lower heart disease rates. We modelled the available evidence and we found that um, as well as the mitigation strategies that are currently available, such as improved technologies in the agriculture sector, we would need to reduce the production of livestock by about 30%. And we focused on livestock as livestock is the major uh, producer of greenhouse gases in the sector. We then assumed that there would be an identical reduction in the amount of livestock products consumed and especially in saturated fat consumption. And saturated fat is a known risk factor for ischemic heart disease, the major cause of mortality in high income countries. And we found that if you use a methodology which is uh, recommended by the World Health Organization, 30% reduction in saturated fat intake would result in 18,000 premature deaths being averted uh, in the UK in one year. So a significant health benefit of a policy which is ostensibly aimed at reducing emissions. Well, first of all, why did we focus on animal product consumption? The reason we did that is that um, livestock contribute quite a substantial proportion of greenhouse gas emissions from the food and agricultural sector. So you can't ignore the food and agricultural sector if you're serious about reducing greenhouse gas emissions quite dramatically, which is what we know has to be done. So we looked first of all at the potential for technological change. Could it all be done just by improving technology of better manure management, more efficient use of feedstocks and so on? And we concluded that, that the evidence presented to us that would be necessary to do that but not sufficient. And the gap it seemed to us uh, between the amount of uh, GHG uh, greenhouse gas reductions that could be achieved through these technological changes and those that were needed was perhaps uh, suggested to us that about a 30% reduction in animal product consumption would be required. So we then modelled the impact of a 30% reduction in a country like the UK, so that's a high consuming country. And what we did was to look at the impact on that on saturated fat consumption, which as we know is quite an important causal factor for heart disease and other medical problems. And so we modelled the impact of reducing uh, the saturated fat consumption from animal products by 30% and then show that that would result in um, about a 15 or 16 percent reduction in ischemic heart disease. In the fifth paper, the investigators analysed how black carbon, ozone and sulfates affect public health. These substances are called shorter lived pollutants because when compared to carbon dioxide which can take a thousand years to dissipate from the atmosphere they take a relatively short time to disappear black carbon's atmospheric lifespan ranges from one to four weeks and its global warming potential or GWP over a 20 year time frame has been calculated to be between a staggering 1,600 to 4,700 times the warming power of carbon dioxide. Black carbon is damaging to health. It was one of the conclusions. It certainly seems to be true. It's not clear whether that's more so than the kind of undifferentiated particles that are normally used in air pollution studies, um, but certainly they are damaging to health. And the study also adds to the evidence that ozone causes excess mortality independently from other pollutants. So the control of both black carbon, which arises partly from household energy but also from other sectors, and ozone would both reduce climate change and benefit population health. And because they're short-lived, some of them only last for days, reductions in the emissions could immediately benefit the climate. Today, we've seen from a public health perspective 
why humanity needs to immediately reduce the enormous amounts of human-induced greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere that are driving climate change. As the cycle of producing and consuming animal products is the source of most of these gases, the most important and simplest step each of us can take to save our planet is to avoid animal products and adopt a plant-based diet. Not only will the world's embrace of the vegan lifestyle halt global warming, but numerous chronic diseases caused primarily by animal foods such as diabetes, obesity and heart disease would virtually disappear. In closing, we would like to thank Dr. Alan Dangor and Professor Sir Andrew Haynes for discussing the findings published in The Lancet and their many implications for global public health. For more details on today's guests, please visit the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine's website at www.lshtm.ac.uk. To read the papers discussed today online, please visit www.thelancet.com forward slash series forward slash health hyphen and hyphen climate hyphen change. Respected viewers, thank you for your company on this week's edition of Planet Earth.